All right, so today we are at Carrie's favorite place because it is her birthday. Happy birthday, Carrie. And we're doing her favorite activities, playing with dogs on the beach while holding some dog poop because we're responsible dog owners. <laughs> we are filming Carrie's birthday vlog on the brand new Insta360 with one inch sensor. I've been asking Insta360 forever, when are we gonna get better hardware, like bigger sensor out of Insta360? And they keep saying like, oh, but you could just get the Titan, which has eight micro four thirds <laughs> sensor. But I don't, I don't know big, if you, Is that the big ball sphere thing? Yeah, but you know, it's like 15 or $16,000. And oh, okay. I don't know if you want me to bring that around on your birthday vlog, so. I think this would be a good or middle ground. <laughs> yeah. You know, the invisible stick, well now, it's like an invisible microphone. So this is hanging off the side, but you can't see it. It's hanging right here on the edge, but it's invisible. So this mount's designed for the Rode Wireless, but it kind of looks like there's two screws here. So I wonder if they're gonna switch this out so you could attach maybe the DJI Wireless. So it's not really a perfect fit, but generally seems like it works. The microphone is mounted right here. It's very cool being able to hide the microphone receiver and record this audio. So now you could record 360. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> that was exciting. I want to get a bunch of different types of shots with this to see how this sensor handles. Now, in case you've never shot with a 360 camera before, it's actually really fun. You just throw it at the end of a stick and run around, basically. Now, do keep in mind that I am using a pre-production version of the firmware, and Insta360 is a sponsor of this episode, so don't look at this so much of a review, but we're going to be going over the shots I was able to get with it, some of the new features and pros and cons, because even though this one-inch sensor is awesome, it's more designed for better image quality, while the One RS and the One X too, they have 100 frames per second. Here, we're only getting 50 frames per second at 3K. And the other action cameras are submergible in water. This one's water resistant, IPX3. So rain, no problem. Snowboarding, go for it. But you don't want to take this and dunk it into the water. But I would bet that they're working on a waterproof housing. But then, of course, there's the benefits of a larger one in sensor. Like usually with a bigger sensor, we get better low light performance. So when you go out with your buddies on a Friday night, you get one too many drinks, then all your regrets will be recorded in nice 6K 360. You will not be able to escape the camera because it can see everything. <laughs> what? That looks so cool. What is this thing? Oh, that's way it different. Has a, and it has a one-inch sensor. Yeah, one-inch sensor 360 camera. Wow. It can even mount this and still keep it invisible. We could also take that off for the drone because that looks amazing. Video. Nice. This has a Leica lens on it too. How heavy is it? Let me see. Not bad. We just mount like this. This is the first shot I'm getting with this, so please don't crash it yet. Don't crash it? Not I yet. I can't control anything what's gonna happen. What are you talking about? You said you were a professional. Yeah, but you said know. you shoot for TV and movies. <laughs> Woo! I feel like the bit rate's up a little bit higher. Like I'm it's getting more be. detail in the dirt, in the shadow. especially considering yeah. how fast we're moving. Whoa, you gotta make sure you don't miss that catch. Nope. <laughs> it's definitely heavier than the One X2. Oh yeah, but, definitely heavier, for sure. But, but I can't, I don't even notice the difference of like the weight wise. I mean, yeah, like find this thing is like solid. You probably get a lot more quality out of it. Oh yeah. You could probably even undersling this thing pretty easily. Oh yeah. And oh, then yeah. that way it's that like- actually, That would dip it right in on the subject. Inches from the ground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love how they've incorporated this so you can do all this editing on your phone and just like, it makes it super easy and intuitive. The fact that we just shot it and being able to play it and edit it while it's still on the camera. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have to actually download it because older versions, oh. you have to download the file yeah. onto your phone. Gotcha. And then that's when you can edit it but now you can just that makes it so easy yeah so you could do all your framing mm -hmm. and then only download the final export which okay. is so much easier wow yeah. that's great oh you shoot 6k uh yeah 6k no way 360 is one of the times where i want as much resolution as i can possibly yeah, get totally you could also do this viewfinder mode turn with it Oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. I'm dizzy. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy here. Well, that's a really fun way to edit a video. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might throw up. Oh, that actually looks really good too. This would have been an awesome one to have it dangling underneath mm -hmm. and it then it just perfect. goes straight through the dirt yeah. and everything. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Trying to get more in shape by doing more physical activities. We still have a little ways to go, but... Oh! Did I win? I think it's actually really cool 
that we can take this microphone and stick it on the side of here. So this is the lens, the battery, and in the middle is the core. And it's actually the same core as what you would get out of the One RS. So it is still part of the modular system, which is nice. So if you already bought an RS, then you can just get the upgrade package and throw this core in here, save you a couple bucks there. But one of the things I think is actually really cool is even if you have the One R, which is a generation before this One RS, there'll be a firmware update. So where you can use it on this one inch mod too. So I think that it's cool that they're still including that backwards compatibility. But speaking of compatibility, one of the very small things I noticed is that with these invisible selfie sticks, when you add this bracket in there, it adds a little bit of space. So the newer stick that they sent me does mount correctly, but the older stick, you can see how it's a little bit kind of rounded at the tip. It's just not long enough to engage the thread. So, you know, if you happen to have one of the older selfie sticks, then it might not mount properly. So you might need to get new one of these, but these are nice. If you have one of the old, old ones where you still have to rotate it to extend it out, this is definitely worth the upgrade because this one's just friction based. You don't have to turn or anything. You just grab it. By the way, how's this image look? This is on the Canon R5C. So video on this eventually coming and also a video on DaVinci Resolve coming. A lot of new things going on. So, you know, ask me questions if you're curious about either this or Resolve. Lot of action cam stuff yeah probably one of the coolest ones was in australia ken block came to australia for the big vr supercar race and they had him doing display things i think i had seven gopros on his car had one to the pedals on the roof everything oh, the cool thing about this is it's like a bunch of action cameras in one mm. in a way when you first start filming with it it's kind of weird like it doesn't really matter where you're aiming it you know, the only aiming you really should do is just think about where the stitch line is. And even if you're like that, it's still filming us, isn't it? So, exactly, yeah. yeah and at that distance, we should be fine. The stitch line should be able to fairly seamlessly get us. From a post-production point of view, like how much messing around is there? So if you're on Premiere, there's a Premiere plugin, so you can load it straight in. The second option is Insta360 Studio. So that's a free software from their site. And the beauty of that is that you can export out to ProRes, so you don't have to worry about resolution loss when you recompress the shot, because usually you have to take the shot out of here and then usually you want to reframe it. You can also just export out a 360 video, so you can put on like a Oculus headset and look around. But the easiest one is the app. Yeah, that's cool. Well, look at that. Yeah, so. And that's you know, obviously like super low res just because it's feeding. Exactly, so yeah. it's a live feed. This is just a way to reference what is in the shot and making sure the shot looks reasonable like in the low res like there's no real gradients there it's just like it's really nice does it do time lapse yeah so just try to hold a steady pace and just walk so this is time lapsing uh no this is just a regular video so we okay. could just export this out like a regular video but we can also do like 16x hyperlapse and we'll actually take all the frames and blend them together so it's like a motion blur after that long I've been walk. Way too many burritos like. <laughs> <laughs> so with that zoomed in like that in sort of post-production yeah what's so the resolution gonna be like it's not gonna be great because the whole image the whole global 360 image is gonna be 6k so if you zoom in way tight yep. then you're looking at a very small part of that 6k right but then mm. if looking you go at, I mean, kind of in that, the middle that looks really good like that yeah like on the phone i usually try to stay near the middle ish generally depending mm. on the screen but on your phone i mean you can get way in there but if you were to zoom all the way in and look at it on a big screen you know, so the professional ones are more like 11k but this is 6k right now we're doing like a bunch of motorbike video we're just doing one talking about lane filtering like yeah you know, what are, uh -huh. the, what they call it here like where you can oh lane splitting yeah lane yeah. splitting yeah you can do that here in california yeah so we can now legally as well so we're talking about that but it's really hard to film it yeah aside this from having a helmet this, camera yeah. or something yeah <laughs> do you want to check out the shots from your bike Okay, so what do I do? So taking the old one, so now I can just switch over like that. Now, one of the nice things about this new version, the One RS, is that the Wi-Fi connection is just way more stable. Before, we would like be trying to frame up a shot and it would lose connections, but now it's like really solid. I want one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Link in description. <laughs> <laughs> so the way we've had this mounted on the bike is Mark's invention. These magnets are insanely strong. The correct pronunciation or pronunciation or what is it? Neodymium, like rare Neodymium. earth magnets. The small one works for just mounting an action camera straight on, right? But mm. what's cool about this is that it's like the, the Po version. And this one works great for if you're trying to mount like a stick because you get so much more leverage every time you go out. And it's these three feet. Rubber coating helps you to 
stop scratching paint and stuff like that. And yeah, without yeah. the rubber coating, it just dink and just oh, yeah. leave a nice footprint on every vehicle you mount it on. My YouTube channel, like I've filmed a lot of it because it's real vlog style, but building cars and bikes. So many like time lapses where you're doing stuff like I built my Land Cruiser on there on a couple of bikes. Just stick it on a bench when you're welding or grinding and then get those shots. Highly recommend it, but maybe check if your car is aluminum before if you want to mount it on your vehicle. Yeah, everyone keeps <laughs> correcting me because I say aluminium because I'm Australian. <laughs> <laughs> when it gets to around this time, that's when the exposure for the previous 1Rs don't look as good. Mm. You know, but this should hold up in this light. So the general philosophy is a bigger sensor means you can have a less dense pixel pitch. So right, if you have a really small sensor that's 4K, you have a really tight pixel pitch, so the density of each RGB photosite is really, really tiny. As you get to a bigger sensor, you can make those photosites bigger, which means they capture more rays of light, which means you have better low light performance, better, better dynamic range, like everything starts to get better. So the picture looks gooder. Picture looks gooder. Cool. And it's got a Leica lens. So, it's a oh, Sumicron. So, Sumicron. Leica gloss is always good, that's cool. It says one inch, and it goes into flow state, which, you know, is good for your yoga. Thank you, Sensei Eric Sam. <laughs> I will go now interesting. and I will shove this in inappropriate places. Don't, don't, no. Hi, Dylan. What up? How you doing? Yeah. Seven out of 10. Check out some of these shots. So this is like shot lab. So basically it's some weird creative shots you can get out of this camera. Okay. Hey, that's like the uh, Kendrick Lamar music video. Oh effect, yeah. Right? That's kind of cool. That's Should cool. we try that one then? Yeah, what do we do exactly? Well, first of all, you have you to dance. dance. You've been practicing your pop locking, right? Yeah, barely, no. Are you a, no. no, you have not been practicing. You pick an effect, you click on it, and it gives you an entire tutorial. So you basically have to be like that girl. You ready? Ready to dance do that? like that? Yeah, and action. Dun, 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 dun. I'm singing a song to a camera, and I'm looking at the sky, and there's clouds, and there's two dogs in a tree, and a bunch of cars over there. A camera not there, but I don't even care because I don't like pears. No, honestly, you're in the wrong profession. You got to go to freaking Capitol Records right now. Yeah. Tell them. Right now, I'm just leaving right, all right now. See ya. So we have our power button, our record button right here, and that's pretty much all you need. Everything else you can control through the touch screen. Now, something that's kind of interesting is at 6K24, I'm getting slightly more resolution than at 6K30. I'm not sure this could be just like a early firmware thing, or maybe they just have a limit on like data rates. You're looking at just under one gig per minute of recording on here. It's actually kind of nice that they provide this 3.5 mil cable because it's the right length. If it was any longer, it could peek into one of the shots. And then down here is that mic adapter that just snaps in. This mic input is only mono. If it was stereo, what would be nice is that when you have multiple microphones connected to it, then you can switch audio tracks and isolate it so I can mute one microphone when I want to. Even if I don't have stereo, I can record internally with the Rode Wireless or the DJI mics. And with DaVinci, it is so easy to sync up all the audio files. Now you just throw all the files in a bin and just auto syncs everything. It's, it's a piece of cake. It does not bother me that I have to do that that extra step really. And then now I have control over my two audio tracks isolated, which is great. Size comparison with the One X2, definitely bigger and heavier, and the lenses are spaced apart a little bit further, which is kind of the trade-off to going with bigger hardware. You have to have it spaced out, but the further apart the lenses are, the more distance you're gonna usually need to stitch the lenses together, because essentially the software is trying to make it look like one lens covering the whole thing, right? Avoid trying to put your face right there in that stitch line or else you start looking a little funny. <laughs> Their recommendation is 0.5 meters, but then here's the One RS. So that's actually not too much more space than the One RS. So best stitch line you're probably gonna get out of the One X2. But this is nice for the modularity and this is gonna give you cleanest image picture image picture what the fuck? that motorcycle ride at night clear indication of how much more detail that one in sensor picks up in dark things like the road or the sky there was just way less noise insta 360's recommendation is to shoot with medium sharpness they also suggested that i shoot with the vivid color profile which is going to make things a little bit more vibrant there's also log and standard now i've been shooting in standard because i like to have the picture a little bit flatter so i can color grade at in a little bit more color in post myself. Now, if we want to take off the lens, we just hit these two buttons right here, comes off the top, take the stick off, and then we can take it out of the sleeve. And then this is the same core, but we just mount it vertically. So see where you usually put in the memory card, which is still in the same spot. This just mounts right there on the battery. But anyways, that is it. 
thank you for watching another video leave me comments about stuff I, sh I should get back to reading comments huh that was fun i kind of missed doing that maybe i'll do that leave comments i'll read them maybe possibly i don't know i just went mind a lot so it's hard to say but anyways that's it click on stuff all right see ya